right there. I'm going to, y'all stay close. Now when Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer being the ninth hour. By the way, next Sunday night, James Wilson right here at Bethlehem Church. I don't want there to be an empty seat in this house. Now back to the Bible. And a certain man lame from his mother's womb was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms of them that entered into the temple, who seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, asked an alms, and Peter, fastening his eyes upon him with John, said, Look on us. And he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. Then said, Peter, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up. And immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. And he, leaping up, stood and walked and entered with them into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. Hallelujah. Tonight I want to preach to you a little while about the blueprint for a Pentecostal revival. Anybody want to have a Pentecostal revival? God, have your way, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. In many circles, there are many who are professional Pentecostals, but amateur apostolics. You can stand or sit. You can do whatever you want. It's a fact that the supernatural is not welcomed in many denominations. If I could be honest with you, it's not really welcomed in a lot of so-called Pentecostal churches either. But it is a fact. It is a fact that the book of Acts is a supernatural book that gives supernatural proof of a supernatural God. Revival is not an option for the church. Revival is a necessity for the church. We must have a move of the Spirit of God. Revival is the birthright of the church. And I know it's 2022. And I know the pundits say that religion is dead and Christianity is dead. But I got news for the pundits and the skeptics and the scoffers. The Holy Ghost is still real and revival is still moving. God, let Holy Ghost revival sweep through Bethlehem one more time. God, let Holy Ghost revival sweep through the pews of this church one more time. God, the ones that hadn't shouted for a while, give them their shout back. The ones that hadn't felt it for a while, set them on fire one more time. Send it, Lord. Send the Pentecostal revival. Not revival of man's religion. Not revival of dead religion. Not revival of heartless religion. Not revival of passionless religion. But God sent a Pentecostal revival to North Mississippi. God sent it to Marshall County and the surrounding area. But don't just do that. Send it to my family. Send it to my house. And send it to me. Does anybody want a real Pentecostal revival in your home, in your life? Do I got any takers for a Holy Ghost revival? Do I got any takers for a real Holy Ghost outpouring? I'm not talking about just showing up a few nights and clapping your hands. I'm talking about something that turns your kids upside down. Do I have any takers for a Holy Ghost outpouring on your marriage? Do I got any takers for more than just going through the motions of religion, but knowing that when I pray, God shows up? I wish somebody would praise Him right now. Hallelujah. Today is Pentecost Sunday. I've said this a time or two today and a time or two over the last few weeks, but at some point, at some point, we were discussing Pentecost Sunday coming up, and we were talking about, about the, the Pentecost Sunday, and we were trying to figure out what we were going to do. And I, I was really trying to figure out if I was going to bring somebody in, but we've had so many people come in, and we've got so many more getting ready to come in. 
that I figured I might have to preach once in a while. But in, in the process of talking about Pentecost Sunday, I think it was one of my kids, maybe both of them, but they said, Dad, that sounds like every Sunday at Bethlehem. I'm saying, God, I hope I don't just say that about last week and last month, but I hope we can say it about tonight and next Sunday and the next Sunday. God sent a Pentecostal revival that perpetually burns with the fire of the Holy Ghost. God sent something into this place that revolutionizes this community. In the name of, do I have anybody who wants that kind of revival in this place? God, do something that gets our neighbor's attention. Do something that gets our community's attention. Do something that gets our nation's attention. God, in the name of Jesus, do something here. Amen, I understand that it seems presumptuous. I'm not here to say that we have a corner on revival. I'm not here to say that we're the only ones going to have revival. But I am going to say that we're going to have revival. And we're going to be part about what God's doing in this time. I'm not shy in declaring that I want God to do things here that he does on the foreign fields. I'm not shy in declaring that I want to see people set free and delivered. I want to watch broken marriages walk down the aisle and find deliverance in the altar altar and peace that they've never seen. I'm not shy in declaring uh, that I believe it's going to happen here. I don't only believe it's going to happen here. We're seeing it happen here. God, send more of it. God, send more. Anybody hungry? You know, you know the worst, you know, the worst enemy of hunger is fullness. That's, that's, I mean, that's as simple as you can get. I, I went to college, and I didn't have to learn that in college. I knew it before I got there. That the best way to not be hungry is to be full. And I pray to God that we don't get so full of what God's doing that we lose our hunger for more. I still want to be amazed when somebody gets baptized with the Holy Ghost. And I watched a gentleman... I watched a gentleman last weekend standing right over here lift his hands and God baptized him with the Holy Ghost. I watched two weeks ago somebody standing right there baptized with the Holy Ghost. I, it never gets old to me. I want to see it happen again tonight. I don't only want it to happen to new people. I want it to happen to everybody in here. I wish everybody from this side all the way to this side would get a fresh baptism of the Holy Ghost. I wish you'd walk out of here feeling like you felt that very first time that you received it. Whether it was a youth camp or a youth conference or a camp meeting or whatever it was, I hope by the time you walk out these doors, you say it's just as good today. to have a blueprint for revival here's the end result of what happened in Acts 3 I'm going to read the end result because I want us to know what happened and then I want us to want to get there Acts 4 31 and when they had prayed the place was shaken where they were assembled together and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and they spake the word of God with boldness and the multitude of them that believed were of one heart and one soul. Neither said any of them that all of the things which he possessed was his own, but they had all things common. And with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. The place was shaken. They were all filled with the Holy Ghost. They spoke the word with boldness. The multitude believed. There was great power and there was great grace. That's the kind of revival I want to see happen here in this place. But it's not going to just happen. It doesn't just fall out of the sky without something happening on our part. There's got to be something happening on behalf of the church that causes that kind of revival to fall and to flow. Man, I'd like to see great grace. I'd like to see great grace on every family in this church. 
can, can I preach to you a little bit? I'd like to see every single pew of this church visited with great power and great grace. I'd like to see this church so full that the pews are filled up and the aisles are filled up and the altars filled up and the vestibules filled up. I want to see great power and great grace, not just around here, but I hope there's so many people shouting up there that they got to shout back here a little bit. And then before long, they got to throw the doors open and make their way out to the prayer room to get a little bit back there because great, everybody say great power. Everybody say great power. Everybody say great grace. I want to see great power and great grace in your family, in your kinfolk. I want to see great power and great grace on your family and on your kinfolk. And I want to see it on your family and your kinfolk. That's the kind of revival I'm talking about. I'm telling not just one or two at a time. I'm talking one or two dozen at a time. I believe it can happen. Do you believe it can happen? Do you believe it can happen? Do you believe it can happen? Do you believe it can, do you believe it can happen? I believe it can happen. If you believe it, I want to hear you shout, I believe. I don't want to hear you say it. I want to hear you shout it. There's something that happens when the church gets together in vision for a move of the Spirit of God. There's something that happens when we come in this place and we're all saying it's not about me. It's all about revival. Send it, God. Send it, God. But that revival, that revival of Acts 4, was a result of what happened in Acts 2 and Acts 3. It began when Simon Peter said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee. The only way we can give this kind of revival to the world is if we have an experience for ourselves. You cannot give miracle power if you've not experienced miracle power. You can't give somebody a touch of the Holy Ghost if you don't have a touch of the Holy Ghost. So you know what I'm praying? You know what I'm praying? Brother Ronnie, you know what I'm praying? I'm praying every single member of this church gets set on fire with a Holy Ghost revival. I hope we all go back to our upper room. Hey, I wish somebody so would catch on fire you gotta have an experience you can't give it if you don't got it so you ought to throw your hands in the air and say God let me have what I need to have so I can give what I need you gotta have a great experience I don't want dead religion I'm not concerned what ecumenical councils think about us I'm not trying to fit in with the local preacher club this world has had enough of denominationalism. This world is tired and ritual and tradition and dead worship. What this world needs is a Pentecostal revival. What this world needs is what we're doing here right now. It would shake it. Just imagine what would happen if every church in this area was baptized with what we felt here tonight. I don't care what they call themselves. Just pour it out, Lord. I don't care what the name of the denomination on the sign is. Just pour it out. Just pour out your spirit. Pour out the Holy Ghost. Pour it out. Hey, I wish somebody would throw their hands up and say, God, let me get it so I can give it. They got it in Acts chapter number 2 when the day of Pentecost was fully come. They were all with one accord and in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. And it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire that sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And from there a revival was sparked through those people. Common everyday people. None of them had a degree in religion. None of them were of the high priest family. 
They were all just common people, shepherds and fishermen and men that knew what to, how to work with their hands and women that knew what it was like to get up in the morning and had to bake bread and cook breakfast just like normal people like everybody else. The kind of revival I'm preaching about happens from people that get up and go to work just like you do. But when you go to work, you go full of the Holy Ghost. Send it, Lord. Send it, Lord. In Acts 3 and 1, Peter and John went together to the temple at the hour of prayer. Can I tell you that the key to revival is not worship and music and preaching. The key to revival is prayer. They went up together to pray. Powerful things happen when the church prays. Revival won't come because of preaching. Revival won't come because of singing. Revival won't come because of music. But revival will come when people pray. And when people pray, the preaching works. And the singing works. And the music works. But without prayer, nothing works. So God, I'm asking you to lay an anointing of apostolic prayer on this generation of the church like never before. Oh, Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Brother Benny, I want you, if you will, moving slowly, take Marshall by the hand, and I want you to go back to that prayer log in the prayer room. You represent two different generations, but I want you, Brother Benny, to pray that an anointing for prayer will sweep across the elders of this church. And Marshall, I want you to pray that an anointing of prayer would sweep across the young people of this church because what we need more than anything else is not a new president. We need new prayer. It's not a new government. It's a new prayer room. It's not a white house. It's a church house that knows how to pray. God, stir us up to pray. 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 Stir us up. God, I feel something about to break loose on Bethlehem. It's the spirit of prayer. Send the spirit of prayer on your people, God. Young men, don't quit praying. If you gather around that log in the prayer room by yourselves, then you gather by yourselves, but you pray. God, let that spirit of prayer that was on Brother J. Frank Wilson that stirred this community, let it get on me, let it get on this church, let it get on our elders, let it get on our young people. We need to learn how to pray again. I'm preaching about a a blueprint for a Pentecostal revival. Every true revival can be traced back to prayer. I'm going to say it again. Every true revival can be traced back to prayer. Every true revival can be traced back to prayer. Thank you, Brother Benny. Thank you, Brother Marshall. I wonder if there's another elder that says, I wish Pastor would have asked me to go back there. Why don't you get up and go back and why don't you go to that prayer log and pray God. Send revival. Maybe everybody can't go. Maybe some of you young people, maybe some of you children feel the spirit of prayer coming on you. You ought to go back, but maybe you can't all go back there. But maybe you can come to an altar and say, God, help me to pray. Help me to pray for revival. Help me to pray for my community. Help me to pray for my city. Brother Zach, kick those doors open because if you don't, they won't be able to hear me preach. And I'm not quite done preaching yet. I'm saying, God, let a spirit and anointing of prayer get a hold of this generation of Pentecostals. Like our elders used to pray. I remember Brother David Stanton walking in the prayer room saying, one more time, Lord. One more time. He was old, but he knew how to pray. God, let that same anointing get a hold of this generation. 
Prayer will change people. Prayer will change circumstances. Prayer will change the world. Come on, let's pray for a revival. God, send another wave, a Holy Ghost revival to Bethlehem. God, send revival to this nation. God, send revival. Come on, you got to help me pray. I hope all our prayers aren't in the back right now. It's Holy Ghost time. It's Holy Ghost time. Come on, the Holy Ghost is drawing people. When you preach about prayer, hearts begin to get stirred up. The Holy Ghost begins to be poured out. People may not understand what's going on, but they can feel what happens in a church that knows how to pray. Teach us to pray. Teach us to pray. It's the blueprint for revival. It begins in prayer. Oh, that's right. Come on, let's pray. People are stirred up. Somebody ought to be praying right now for the Holy Ghost to be poured out. Somebody ought to just roll, go around and lay your hand on these pews and say, God, whoever sits in this pew, let them be touched by the power of the Holy Ghost. God, let the anointing that's in this place break through their burden, break through their pain, break through their addiction, break through their hurt, break through their tradition. Teach us to pray, God. Prayer is the fountain that revival springs from. Prayer is the key to every revival. Prayer in every age group will turn a church upside down. Full altars and full prayer rooms will do what no amount of production, what no amount of promotion, what no amount of activity can do. It'll happen when we pray. I wish you'd raise your hands all over this place and say, God, send Pentecostal revival here. Oh, and I want to hear your voices. I want to hear your voices. Lord and your great grace and God let your great mercy touch oh God touch God, in the name of the Lord, God, I pray for an anointing on this young man's life. Thank you for bringing him back home. God, I pray, Lord, let a Holy Ghost revival break out in his friend circle, in his family circle. God, in the name of Jesus, give him the guidance. Let him walk in the Holy Ghost. Let him walk in the power of your spirit. God, give, give moms and dads wisdom. God, give moms and dads wisdom to make right choices. God, give them anointing on our parents to raise their families. Oh, God, in the name of Jesus, touch our teenagers. 
Touch our children, oh God. That's right. Reach over, pray with somebody close to you. There's a move of the Spirit here. I got more stuff I want to preach, but there's a move of the Spirit here. Amen. Somebody's hungry for a fresh anointing in your life. You ought to throw your head back and say, God, pour on me a fresh anointing of your Spirit. He's the answer for your family. He's the answer for your marriage. He's the answer for your finances. He's the answer for your soul, for your mind, for your heart, for your emotions. He's the answer for your children. He's the answer for your life. He's the answer for everything. And he moves when we pray. That's right. You can talk to him. You can just tell him right now, God, I need you. God, I don't understand all that's going on around me. I don't understand all what's happening. But God, I need you, and I need you in my life. You can pray that right now. Oh, Holy Ghost, have your way. The next step of a Pentecostal revival was instead of walking by somebody that had a need, they had to be willing to stop and help somebody that had a need. For us to go to the next level of revival, we can't walk by people that don't have it all together. We can't walk by people that have needs. We got to reach for the people that have needs. That revival was sparked by somebody that needed God in their life. Everybody that comes through the doors of this church, whether they have two pennies to rub together, maybe they're bound by addiction, maybe their reputation shot, but whatever case they come in, we're not going to walk by them. We're going to reach our hand to them. We're going to reach for people that have needs because you can't have revival without people that need God. This community needs God. The drug addict needs God. The alcoholic needs God. And this church was put here for them. The broken people, the hurting people, the wounded people, the empty people, the sinful people, the dirty people, they need God. Can we pray that God help us come in contact with people that have needs? And then they prayed for him. Everybody say they prayed for him. But they didn't just pray for him. The Bible said they reached and they picked them up. They took him by the hand. It's not enough just to pray for sinners. We got to reach for sinners. They took him by the hand and lift. let's lift people up. Can we do that? Can we lift people up that are hurting? Can we lift people up that have issues? Can we lift people up that have, that have troubles and struggles? They reached for him. And they picked them up. They lifted them up. And when they, when the church lifted them, they received strength. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. That's right, girls. The Holy Ghost is here to touch you. 
That's right, let's pray. The Holy Ghost is doing things. The Holy Ghost is doing things right now. Hallelujah, find somebody to pray with. Holy Ghost, do a work. I feel revival coming again. I feel a fresh wave of the Holy Ghost coming again. I feel a fresh anointing being ready to be poured out. I feel another wave of the Holy Ghost getting ready to shake this church. Our young people are going to youth camp this week. I wish somebody would help me pray that they get more this week than they've ever gotten any other time. That when they come back, they're so on fire. You think they're on fire now. God, speak to them. Work on them. Help them. Bless them. send a wave of joy on your people. Send a fresh anointing of joy on your people. Not joy because we got money in our pocket. Not joy because everything's going great, but joy because we got your Holy Ghost in our heart. Let an anointing of joy sweep across your people that lifts our head when we're down and out. In the name of Jesus, I wonder, I wonder, I'm, I'm, I'm done. I really am. I'm over. I'm, I'm I'm not through, but I'm done. I wonder if people that have raised your children, grandparents, people that have children that are adults, maybe you don't have grandchildren yet, but I wonder if you'd raise your hands right now. And I wish all our young people would raise your hands, and I wish you'd help me pray for all of our parents of children, of teenagers and small children, that God would give wisdom and anointing that we, can, can, that we can raise. Man, these young people are awesome. I want the next group of young people to be awesome. And the next group, can you help me pray that we, keep, that we raise a generation of apostolic children in this generation that doesn't water down holiness and doesn't water down worship and doesn't water down the experience, but that carries an authentic apostolic Pentecostal revival to the next generation. Can you pray for our moms and dads that God would give them wisdom and understanding and direction? Oh, Holy Ghost, help us. Holy Ghost, help us. Holy Ghost, help us. We got some of the finest young people and children anywhere in the world. Help us, God, to lead them properly. Help us, God, to be examples. Help us, God, to be the examples we need to be in prayer and worship. Thank you, Jesus.
God, I pray, let an anointing of unity come upon your church. God, bind our hearts together. God, help us to have the oil of anointing for unity on our, on our church body. God, to be united in purpose, united in vision, united in dedication. Help us, oh God, not to let little differences separate us from our brothers and sisters. But help us, God, to be as merciful and patient with our brothers and sisters as we would have them to be with us. Help me, God, to be merciful and patient with our children and our young people. Bind us together with unity in the spirit and the bond of peace, God. In the name of the Lord Jesus. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Folks, I'm expecting it. I'm expecting it. Devin, I'm expecting God to do great things. Man, I'm looking for it. Brother Joe, I'm looking for God to touch you right now. Let Devin, lay hands on Brother Joe. He needs a healing in his body. He's been dealing with an issue for a couple of weeks, and we plead the blood of Jesus for healing on Brother Joe's body. Strengthen him, God. Strengthen him. This is our brother, Lord, washed in your blood, carrying your name. I loose healing virtue over him in the name of Jesus. Gonna pray about one more thing and then I think I'm done. But if you've been dealing with discouragement, if you've been dealing with discouragement, I want you just to get, get, get somebody close to you and say, he's talking to me, I need prayer for this. This isn't, a, this, this isn't a, you, you shouldn't be embarrassed, there's nothing to be ashamed of. But if you've been dealing with discouragement, I just want you to tell somebody close to you, pray with me, I've been dealing with discouragement. And then we're going to pray right now. I'm giving you a minute. I'm giving you a minute to, to yoke up with somebody. I'm giving you a minute to, to, to get with someone. In the name of Jesus, I, I'm giving you a little bit of time to connect with someone. God, in the name of Jesus, God, you are our glory and the lifter of our head. God, the times and trials of this generation are great. We're wearied with the greatness of the way. God, we're living in a generation that is against you and your people. But God, you are our peace and our joy, our shield and our buckler. I pray for the mind and the heart and the spirit of these men and women and young people and children. God, I loose, oh God, an anointing upon their mind, oh God not to become discouraged in this moment, not to become discouraged in this hour. This is the time for victory. This is the time for revival. This is the time for breakthrough. Anoint your people with a fresh anointing of strength. Anoint them, God, with a fresh anointing of victory, a fresh anointing of peace, a fresh anointing of joy. God, pour a fresh anointing on the men and women and young people of this assembly and those watching online. God, I pray, let the confidence of the Holy Ghost, the boldness to speak your word with faith to come out of their mouth. authority over every demonic power that would try to hinder the people of God. I loose and I plead the blood over their mind, over their spirit in the name of Jesus over their homes, over their family. I plead the blood of Jesus over their thinking, their decisions, over their finances, over their home 
in the name of the Lord Jesus. Give a fresh anointing of your strength, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus.